Now section 8.3 is probably where I would have chosen to start had I been writing this textbook. Now I haven't uh, started with this section going through the videos just because I think it's easier where I can to try and follow the book through. That's the whole idea of the, of the playlist. Um, but here we go. X is in terms of T, Y is in terms of T. So how does that help us? Well, if I was going to use a table of values, here T, look, goes from 0 to 2 pi. So I'm going to let T take the values 0 and then all the way up to 2 pi and pick some sensible values in between. So why have we picked these values? Well, these are values that we can deal with, right? Pi by 4, I know the sign and the cos of. Pi by 2, I know the sign and the cos of them. So T goes from 0 all the way up to 2 pi. Now, if I pick my t values, as I have done there, I can use those t values and calculate what x equals at those different t values. I can calculate what y equals at those different t values by just substituting in here. So this is a table of values, right? Think back to, I don't know, year eight, when you first saw tables of values, you picked your own x values, you used the formula and they gave you the y values. Well, in this case, we're going to pick our own t values, use the formula that gives the x values and the y values. So now I've got x values and y values, I can plot them. So seven, zero goes on the curve there. 6.12, 1.41 goes on the curve here. Okay, six and a bit, one and a bit, and it goes here. And then we keep plotting x and y, x and y, x and y, x and y, and I get these points around here. Now, if I want to, I can also then label those with their t values. So when t equals zero, I get that point. t equals pi by four is this point. t equals pi by two is this point. So actually, t sort of cycles round here. Uh, and when we get to two pi, as you might have expected, we get back to where we started because if t is an angle, two pi is a full turn. So, um, you know, sine of a full turn and cos of a full turn should be the same as uh, sine of zero and cos of zero. So it, it should cycle around. Okay. So if I, it, there's no point in keeping going, if I put some other t values in here, I just repeat this curve. So there is a, a sort of uh, um, elliptical curve. And it's been nice and easy to write that in parametric equations. So that's the other thing we can do with parametric equations is we can use them to sketch the curves. How do you do that? Same table of values technique we've been using for years. And in this case, you pick your T values and the other values come out of that. Look at the range of T values that you've got and substitute those, uh, you know, pick your T values accordingly. And then you can get your X and Y values out of it. Probably good practice to just label the different values of T along the curve as you go as well, okay? Um, so there we go, section 8.3 curve sketching works like that.